our subject is Holy Mother on Human Problems. First I must tell you in brief who is this Holy Mother. Holy Mother is the spiritual consort of Sri Ramakrishna. She was born in December 1853 and passed away in July 1920 at the age of 67. According to our tradition, God, an incarnation of God, Avatar, does not come alone. He comes with his power, Shakti. As we find in Rama incarnation, Sita came. In Krishna incarnation, Radha. In Buddha incarnation, Yashodhara. In Chaitanya incarnation, Vishnu Priya. Always they come together. Swami Vivekananda said, A bird cannot fly with one wing. Two wings are necessary Shiva and Shakti. <coughs> she is the embodiment of Divine Mother. Generally, those who are brought up in Judeo Christian tradition, they believe God as Father, man. But according to Vedanta, God is Satchidananda, existence, knowledge, bliss, absolute. God is neither man nor woman. God is all pervading pure consciousness. I give an example. Here is a chandelier with four billion electric bulbs. That whole chandelier is luminous because of the electricity. So we all we are each individual is a bulb, but we are getting light from that pure consciousness. That is the way we conceive that great being who is behind us. The Upanishad also tells us Twang Stri Twam Pumanoshi Twam Kumara Utuba Kumari. You are the man, you are the woman, you are a young boy, you are a young girl, you are like an old man tottering with a stick. Oh Lord, you are all pervading, you are in everything, in every being. So we believe that as the fire and its burning power always remain together, so God and his power, Shakti, always live together. When God incarnates, he comes with a particular mission. This mission cannot be fulfilled only by a man. We need Shakti. We find after Sri Ramakrishna's passing away, Holy Mother conducted his spiritual ministry for 34 years. She was born in a very poor family. Her parents are devout Hindus. Her birthplace was Jairambati, 60 miles north east, sorry, northwest from Calcutta. She did not go to school. She helped her mother, tried to raise her brothers and sister. She was married when she was five or six years old with Sri Ramakrishna. It is a kind of betrothal, you know, in then when she was 18, she came to her husband in Dokshineshwar. 
श्री रामकृष्ण इनफोक्ट डिविनिटी वर्शिपिंग हार श्री सर्व श्री रामकृष्ण वन जी होली मदर आस्ट व्हाट डू यू थिंक ऑफ मी श्री रामकृष्ण से द मदर हु इज इन द टेंपल द मदर हु गेव बर्थ टू दिस बॉडी लिव्स इन नावत द सेम मदर इज सर्विंग मी श्री रामकृष्ण सॉ ऑल वुमेन आर द एम्बॉडीमेंट्स ऑफ द डिवाइन मदर Once holy mother made a remark, make no distinction between Sri Ram Krishna and me. He left me behind to manifest the motherhood of God to the world. She revealed her divinity on many occasions. We heard those stories from her disciples in 1950s, 60s. many of his disciples are alive at that time now i shall tell you a story i went to visit a temple in the meadow name of that meadow is called telo velo i went there on 10th september 2001 last year in that field holy mother was attacked by a bandit highwayman i translated that story and i want to read to you first then i shall tell you more you will have to understand holy mother was then 22 23 years old a beautiful young woman she had no money she is walking 60 miles barefooted to see her husband in dakshineshwar from jayarambati to dakshineshwar she was walking with other pilgrims In those days the holy mother usually traveled from Jayarambati Kamarpugo to Dakshineshwar on foot because she had no money or little of it or for some other reason people traveled from Jayarambati Kamarpugo area to Arambagh and then crossed the 10 mile long field called Nem near Telovelo to reach Tarukeshwar from there they had to traverse a similar field Koikala to reach Bodhavati and finally cross the ganges by boat to dakshineshwar those two vast fields are inhabited by highway men even now people say that many travelers lose their lives at the robber sands in the morning at noon and in the evening telo and velo are two small villages situated almost side by side in a field a couple of miles away from these villages is a temple with a fierce and dreadful form of kali known as the robbers kali of telovelo people say that robbers worship this kali before proceeding to rob and murder travelers in those days people traveled in groups to traverse those two fields to protect themselves from robbers Once the holy mother was walking from Kamarpugo to Dakshineshwar with the daughter and youngest son of Rameshwar and few other men and women after reaching Arambagh her companions thought they had enough time to cross the field of Telovelo before dusk so they were unwilling to pass the night there only the mother she already walked 12 miles barefooted Although the holy mother was exhausted from the journey she said nothing and walked on with the party but they had scarcely walked 4 miles when she found she could not keep up with them and began to lag behind they waited for a while then asked her to walk faster and move on 
When they reached the middle of the field, they noticed that she was quite far behind and walking slowly. They waited for her again and when she caught up them said, If we walk this slowly, we shall not cross the field before 9 p.m. and we will be attacked by robbers. The Holy Mother knew that she had inconvenienced the others and caused them alarm. So she asked them not to wait for her. She said, you go on to Tarukeshwar Inn and rest there. I shall meet you as soon as possible. Seeing the approach of sunset and taking her at her word, without further delay, they began to walk faster and were soon out of sight. The Holy Mother then continued along as fast as he could, but she was terribly exhausted. After a while, she, the sun sank below the horizon of the field, extremely anxious. She wondered what to do. Just then she saw a tall, dark, horrible-looking man with a staff on his shoulder <coughs> rapidly approaching her. Another person, probably his partner, was behind him. She realized that it was useless to run away or to shout. So she stood still and awaited their arrival with great fear. Within a few moments, the man reached her and asked harshly, Who are you, standing here alone at this hour of the morning, evening? To placate him, the Holy Mother surrendered to him completely, addressing him as father. Father, my companions have left me behind, and it seems I have lost my way. Kindly accompany me to where they are. Your son-in-law lives at the Dakshineshwar Kali temple. I am going to him. If you accompany me there, he will certainly appreciate your kindness and show your proper courtesy. No sooner had she said this than his companion arrived. The Holy Mother noticed that it was not a man, but a woman, his wife. When the Holy Mother saw her, she was greatly reassured. The Holy Mother ten, then took her hand and addressed her as Mother, saying, Mother, I am your daughter Sharada. My companions have left me behind, and I was in great danger. It is sheer luck that you and Father have come. I do not know what I would have done otherwise. The Holy Mother's unhesitating and simple behavior, her complete trust, and her sweet words melted the hearts of the Bhagdi highwayman and his wife. Forgetting social customs and caste, their low, lower caste, they accepted her as their own daughter and consoled her. Aware of her physical ex exhaustion, they would not allow her to go farther that night. But they took her to a small shop near the village of Telovelo and arranged for her to stay the night. The woman made a bed for the Holy Mother with some of her own clothes and other things. And the man bought puffed rice and sweetened parched rice for her to eat. Thus with parental love and care they let her sleep guarding her throughout the night. They woke her up the next morning and accompanied her to Tarukeshwar about an hour after sunrise. <coughs> there they took shelter in an inn and asked her to rest. The woman told her husband, My daughter practically fasted last night. Finish your worship at the Shiva temple quickly and buy some fish and vegetables. I would like to feed her well. While the man was doing his errands, the Holy Mother's companions came to the inn in search of her and were delighted to see that she had arrived safely. When the man returned, the Holy Mother introduced her adopted parents to her companions, saying, I don't know what I, I would have done last night if they had not taken me under their protection. Everyone performed worship in the Shiva temple, cooked and ate together, and had a little rest. When the party prepared for their journey to Vaidyavati, the Holy Mother expressed her gratitude to the Bhagdi couple and took her leave of them. The Holy Mother told us later, in one night we had become so close that when we parted we began to weep profusely. 
I invited them repeatedly to visit me at Dokshineshwar. When they could, but even when they agreed, I parted from them <coughs> with great difficulty. They accompanied us for a considerable distance. The woman picked some green peas from a nearby field, tearfully tied them in a corner of my cloth, and said plaintively, Sharuda, my child, when you eat pap rice too nice, please have these peas with it. They kept their promise and visited me a few times in Dokshineshwar, bringing sweets and other gifts. I told the master the whole story and he received them warmly, treating, treating them as kindly as if they were his own relatives. Although my robber father is simple and well behaved now, I believe he used to commit robbery before we met. That is the story. It is a fascinating story. Do you know I was, I was there on that spot where she was attacked. And that terrible looking Kali. If you are interested, I shall show those slides on the 29th January at 8 o'clock in the evening. I shall give a slideshow of my last trip. Please come. Do you know what I was thinking? Here is a young woman, 22 years old, exhausted, cannot run. She cannot run, she cannot shout. Four miles around radius, there is no human being. Who will respond to your cry? He cannot run, he cannot shout, he cannot fight. What will she do? To protect herself. Think about you. You are in that situation. What will you do? Do you know what did she do? She used the most powerful weapon you can think of. It is in the Mahabharata. Mriduna darunam hanti, mriduna hanti adarunam, nasibbo mriduna kinchit, tasma tikshnataram mriduhu. Dr. Sarbhavali Radha Krishnan during Holy Mother's centenary used these two lines in the introduction of the great women of India. Mriduna darunam hanti, mridu. Mridu means modesty, humility. It conquers the heart of the cruel. It conquers the heart of every human being. Without, with this power, one can do anything. There is no powerful weapon than humility and modesty. So she, used, she did not use any gun or any, 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 any kind of weapon. This weapon immediately conquered this murderer highwayman's heart instantly. Father, I am your daughter Sharada. Thus. But people say this robber also saw something in her, but she, he saw the Divine Mother in her. This story, Swami Sharadanda wrote in the Ramakrishna, the Great Master, indicating how she could solve human problems. Do you know what is the biggest problem all of us here? Lack of power of adjustment. We, some people are very individualistic, selfish. They cannot get along with people. So much friction, even in family life. Husband and wife with children, we do not get along. Constantly fight. This, her life and her message demonstrate how to bring this power of adjustment, harmony in day to day life which is extremely important in this present age. One of our Swamis used to say, you know, here is an iron rod, cast iron rod, and here is a steel rod. If you try to bend a cast iron rod, it will break. And if you try to bend a steel rod, it will never break, it will bend. Which one is stronger? The steel rod. 
how you can be flexible, how you can adjust with people, with friends, with family, we in the office. That she demonstrated. Powerless. Because Sri Ramakrishna taught her, Jokhan Jamon, Tokhan Tamon. Jekhane Jamon, Shekhane Tamon. Jake Jamon, Take Tamon. You must learn how to adjust according to place, according to time, according to person. Place, time, person. You must learn how to adjust. The more you know how to adjust, the more you will be happy. You cannot change the world. Change is always subjective. It is foolishness that, you know, if a person thinks, I can change your life. I always remind people, change is always subjective. Shami Bibikaranda gave an illustration. Here is a flying fish. This fish learned how to fly. Why? Because if the fish stays in the water, I saw in the Catalina Island from Los Angeles, Flying fish, really they fly. If you stay in the water, the whales will swallow you. So how can you save yourself? You cannot change the mind of the whale that practice ahimsa, non-violence. It will not work. You cannot dry the ocean either. How will you protect yourself? Only by learning flying. You can change yourself. You cannot change the whale, you cannot change the ocean. Change yourself. The moment you change yourself, the world changes.